This video is proudly sponsored by McGraw-Hills Access Engineering. You ever find yourself struggling class and you need just a little bit more help? You need to see worked out solutions. You need to see video solutions. In classes such as statics, solids, thermo, dynamics, material science, then Access Engineering may be for you. So go check out Access Engineering, link in the description below, and get the help that you need today. Now, on with the video. Hey friends, we're back. We're talking about shear moment diagrams, and today we're going to talk about the equation method. This is not my students' very favorite method. They don't like this. So why do I have to use the equation method? Why can't I use the graphic method? That seems so much easier. It is easier. And I'm telling you, use the graphic method for every single case, except for one case. And the only case is this. When you have on your V diagram, you have a parabola, a parabolic shape, a parabolic curve, and that curve crosses this axis, then you got to use the equation method. The graphic method will not work, okay? It won't work on that one case. So all I'm looking for is a parabolic line that crosses this, and I'm going to have that on this one. Generally, that happens when you have a triangular distributed load on your load diagram, right? If this is V, this is M, and I call this guy up here L, right, for load diagram, okay? So we're going to have to use the, the, uh, the equation method on this one, but that's okay. I got you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Remember from our last video, the order of the lines, okay? That's what I kind of made up for how these graphs are related, right? This is the integral of that graph. This is the integral of that graph. So as you go down the graphs, if you have a, a concentrated load, the next graph is going to be a horizontal line, right? If you have a horizontal line, the next graph down is going to be a slope. If you have a slope, the next graph down is going to be parabolic. That's what we have here. We have a slope, so the next graph down is going to be parabolic. And then finally, the last graph would be cubic below that. Okay, so how do we do this? We need to draw the shear moment diagram for the given load for that guy. Okay, so, so step one is find global equilibrium. Okay, so here we go. Over here we've got a BY. And then we've got this guy, right? Remember, when you have a distributed load, we got to turn into a concentrated load, and we apply that concentrated load at the centroid of that shape. Uh, let me put this on here. This is um, this is 12 meters, okay? Which would mean that it, this guy here is at four meters, and this guy would be eight meters. Okay, so that's where that would, and how big would that be? Well, 12 times 9 is, uh, let's see, 108, and 108 divided by 2 is 54. All right, so this is 54 kilonewtons. Okay, so let's see if we can find global equilibrium for that. Okay, global goes like this. How about, uh-oh, I didn't put A on there. I should put A on there. How about over here we have this? We have AY. You know, we have an AX also, right? But he's zero. So we don't need to know what is AY, what is BY. So I'm going to do this. How about some of the moments at A? And what do I get? Put my finger at A. The 54 rotates me clockwise. That's negative. So minus 54 times 8 minus, uh, plus BY times 12. All right, let's see what that is, okay? Here we go. On clear, 54 times 8 equals, divided by 12 equals 36, okay? So BY, I'm going to put him over here. BY equals 36, and remember, the up stuff, up stuff has to equal the down stuff, so I've got 54 going down. So let's see, what is that, uh, 10, 14, 18? Going uphill, okay? And that's kilonewtons. And this is kilonewtons. Okay, so there's our global equilibrium. We are ready to um, solve, to plot this. Let's plot it, okay? 
So remember our load backpack from last time. Our V diagram is going to work exactly like that. We hop on this beam, right? We put on our load backpack, 18 up right off the bat. So boom, there I am at 18. Okay. Whoop. That's a Van Halen force made me might as well jump. Okay. And then I got to go down. I got to go down 54. So 18 minus 54 puts me at negative 36. Okay. And the question is, how do I get from there to there? This is the number one thing I see missed on these for my students is this. I know it's parabolic. I have a, a slope up here. So the next curve down is going to be parabolic. So, but like that's parabolic, but that's also parabolic. So the question is, is it that line or is it that line? Okay. Well, think about it this way. As I'm going along here, right, as I take a little step, I'm getting a very small amount of, of, a, of a load here, right? I take another step, I'm getting a little more load. Another step, a little more load. And then by the time I get over here, I'm, I'm getting a lot of load. So I'm definitely not acquiring load linearly, but here's what I'm doing. One step over here, I just get a little short stack of load. But over here, I'm getting, yo, fat stacks, right? So I'm accumulating load, slow, then fast. Think about snow skiing, okay? You're snow skiing, right? What does slow then fast look like on the snow skiing slope? Well, slow then fast is like bunny slope, mm, black diamond. This would be fast then slow. So our choice here this time is that top curve, okay? So this is our, our graph here, right? This is the one. So you have to ask yourself, are we going fast and slow or slow than fast? And then we've got this 36 over here. Do we have a John Denver force? Bam, take me home to the place I belong on my shear graph back to zero. There you go. Okay, so that's bad I've seen to you, I'm sorry. Okay, but you should always get back to zero. If you don't get back to zero, you should know, self, I made a mistake. Okay, so this is gonna go, I'm gonna put a little plus here, I'm gonna put a little minus there, which means on my next graph down, I'm gonna go uphill and then I'm gonna go downhill. So that means at this point, right there, you know, my graph is gonna switch from uphill to downhill, so I'm gonna have a humpy do right there. Yes, I know, it's not called a humpy do, it's a local min or max, but I like humpy do better, okay? So I can go ahead and sketch my M graph, I know what it's gonna look like. It's gonna go fast, then slow, so it's gonna look like this, okay? And then this last little bit over here is gonna go slow, then fast. So it's gonna go, and I know it has to go back to zero. So I know that's what my graph looks like. But as an engineer, one thing that I'm really interested in is what is this maximum moment that occurs right there? I need to know what that is, right? There you go. That's what I'm interested in is what's the number right there? Where is that? I don't know. How about at a distance of X, okay? That's where it is. Now, a lot of you would say, oh, I see it, I see it, right? It occurs at the centroid of that triangle. That's where that, that crosses the axis. And what would Admiral Akbar tell you? It's a trap, right? <laughs> That's really a bad Admiral Akbar, right? It's a trap. I've never seen the centroid of this come out, or, the, or the, where this crosses the axis come out to be at the centroid of the triangle. Let's find out where it is, right? The centroid is at eight, but I think it's just a coincidence that Dr. Hansen draws really good. And you know, maybe, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's there. Let's see where it really is. So how do you know? Well, here's what you gotta do, okay? We're just gonna extend this line on up here, doo -doo 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 -doo, okay? And that, that guy is at this distance X, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this beam right there, okay? That's my saw line where I'm gonna cut that beam. So I'm gonna go over there and draw that free body diagram. I'll draw this one over here, okay? So here I go. All right, so I have over here an 18. And then I've got this distributed load. And, oh, what happens over here where I cut the beam? You must have a M and V, right? <laughs> Do it. You have to do it in a Mickey Mouse voice. There's your N. We drew the 
So I'm, I'm just drawing from here over, so I'm drawing the left side. You don't want to get left at Walmart, so you'd feel down, right? <laughs> we have to remember this for our positive sign convention, okay? Now, it would be really nice to know what the value of y is right there. That would be super cool. Well, because it's not 9, right? It's something less than 9. If only we knew an equation for y for that like straight line right there that was like, oh, oh, mx plus b. Well, in this case, b is 0. So the slope is rise over run. And so 9 over 12, let's see, 9 divided by 3 is 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So how about 3 fourths x equals y? Genius. Okay, so how tall is the curve over here at a distance of x? Well, it's uh, 3 fourths x. That's how big it is. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to, once again, I need to turn that uh, distributed load into a concentrated load. So here he is, <clears throat> and that distributed load is one half, the base times the height, which is three fourths x, okay? And let's see, that becomes three eighths x squared. Okay, so there it is. So I need an equation for V. I want to know, I want to know what's going on for anywhere on that line. Like if I said, what is the value of V at four feet? I need an equation for V that would tell me that. What is the value for M at four feet? I need an equation for that. Well, look here at this free body. We could get an equation for V by just writing the sum of the force in the Y, couldn't we? Sum of the forces in the Y equals zero equals 18 going uphill minus 3 eighths x squared going downhill minus v. So therefore, v is equal to 18 minus 3 eighths x squared. There's an equation for v. Look at that. How genius is that? And you thought it was going to be hard. All right, how about an equation for m? Okay, well, m, let's do how about the sum of the moments? We'll do the sum of the moments about the cut. We'll call it x, okay? Okay, and so what do I have? Remember, when you take the moment here, you can't knock moments out, right? So he goes in the equation. I drew him positive, so m. And then there's 18, which rotates me mm, negative, minus 18 times how far away? X. Um, and then this one rotates me positive, so plus 3 eighths x squared times how far away is that? Remember the centroid of a triangle, a third the base, so x over 3. So let's see here. m is equal to uh, 18x minus uh, 3 24th x cubed. Okay, and so there is an equation for m. Genius. Hey, wait a minute. How did we say that these graphs are related? How is this one related to that one? How is this one related to that one? This one's the integral of that one. So if you integrated that, what would you get? 18 becomes 18x. 3 eighths x squared becomes x squared is x cubed over 3. Wow. So do I have to write that moment equation? The answer is no, you don't have to. Well, does that always work? The answer is no. Let's say you had this. Let's say you had a concentrated moment here that was like 200 um, kilonewton meters, right? Just, just for saying, okay? When I write my moment equation, I, what would I do? Well, that, that's a negative moment. I would have just put minus 200, right? So when you have a concentrated moment on your diagram, if you integrate this, that's fine. But this guy is going to wind up being like your plus C. When you integrate, you have your plus C, your constant, okay? But in this case, we didn't have a concentrated moment, so our plus C in this case would be just zero, okay? That's the only one you got to be careful of. So if that confuses you a little bit about what, what the sign is going to be or whatever, just go ahead and write the moment equation. It's just not that hard, is it? Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> On this graph, at a distance of x, what is the value of v? 
it's zero, isn't it? So let's put a, Z, a zero in for V and see if we can't solve for uh, X. All right, let's see what we get. That would be on clear, clear. 18 times eight equals divided by three equals 48 and then square root of that equals 6.93. So X equals 6.93 meters, right? Dang, we thought it was going to be at eight. It's actually almost to seven, right? It's not at the centroid of that triangle. It's a trap. Don't fall for it. Now, how do we find this value of M right here? Well, easy as pie, right? Take that guy, bam, plug him in right there, and, and yo, we got him, right? 18 times answer minus 3 divided by 24 times, ooh, answer cubed equals 83.14. So M equals 80. 3.14 kilonewton meters. Okay, so this value right here, 83.14 kilonewton meters. Okay, boom. Okay, one way to check yourself, just kind of make sure, sanity check, right? Um, how about my V? My V equation? If I plug in 12, what should I get? If I plug in 12 to that, Dude, I should get negative 36. Let's just check ourselves. Sanity check. 18 minus 0.375, that's 3 eighths, times 144, that's 12 squared, equals negative 36. Bam, we, we got it. So there you go. The equation method. Is it hard? No. You've got to look at the point where it crosses the axis, cut your beam, draw a free body diagram of the left side or the right side. It doesn't matter. You know what happens when you cut a beam. You must have an M and V. Go ahead and solve for V and M. That gives your equations. And then set your V equal to zero. Boom. Put, put your uh, value of X into the M equation and you're done. Okay? That is the equation method, my friends. I'll see you on the next video.